it might come as a surprise to a lot of people that I didn't grow up playing very many Nintendo games. Even those who had parents who thought video games were violent knew that Nintendo made nice, family-friendly games. And sure, I had a Wii and a Game Boy Advance growing up, but for the most part, all I ever really played when I was younger was Godzilla games and New Super Mario Bros. Which makes it even more interesting that a game series that started in 1986 and wouldn't even be discovered by me until 2017 after looking into what that cool robot character in Super Smash Bros. was, would become a new obsession of mine. And as it would turn out, it was at just the right time. Hello everyone, this is Steam Iguana, and today we're gonna delve into something else I love besides giant radioactive dinosaurs and superheroes that live inside computers, Metroid. While I love to dig into one of the games or look at some of the things it has in common or is taken from Kaiju Media, or even just go into why I love this franchise so much, Today, I just wanted to show you guys my collection. I mean, people show off their Godzilla collections all the time. Why not show off my Metroid collection? For those who aren't as familiar with Metroid, it's a sci-fi series by Nintendo following the bounty hunter Samus Aran, and it was one of the games that inspired, well, the Metroidvania genre. Whether it's fighting space pirates and their leader Mother Brain, killing her arch nemesis Ridley, battling her evil dark doppelganger who's infected by a radioactive substance, or even committing genocide on an entire species of parasitic, life-draining aliens. They're just fun games to play and have some of the best atmosphere and ambience in all of gaming. It also helps that it was heavily inspired by the Alien franchise. Honestly, I wonder how I didn't get into Metroid sooner. But anyways, let's see what I've managed to collect since getting into the series all the way back in 2017. Starting off here with some of the smaller bits and bobs I have, like the Metroid Amiibo. Forgive my setup here, it's not nearly as nice as here in the cyber world. But yeah, I remember hunting some of these down with my friend when Metroid Samus Returns came out in 2017, being the perfect catalyst for me to really get into this franchise. I just ordered these OG Super Smash Bros. ones online since they weren't being sold at stores at that point, but they're still pretty nice little pieces. Not nearly as nice as these Samus Returns Amiibo though, Look at how detailed that Samus Amiibo is! And the squishy Metroid? Whoever made the decision to make the Metroid squishy is a goddamn genius. Man, these were just some awesome finds. I got them with my copy of the game at GameStop, which is a whole nother story that I'll get into a bit later. And of course, last up for the Amiibo are the Smash Brothers Ultimate Amiibo, which are just really quality little figurines. I think not just for these Metroid ones, but for all of the new ones. There's just a really good level of extra quality compared to the older ones. Gotta love Ridley and Dark Samus though. These ones just really pop out on the shelf. <sighs> I wish I had a recording of my reaction to Ridley getting in Smash. Oh, shit, the moment I saw oh, that shit. Oh shit. Oh! <laughs> oh. 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 Oh my god. Ridley and Smash! Oh my god! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh my god, it's Ridley! Oh my god! Anyways, here's a few other little pieces in my collection, like this very tiny Samus. This one is just alright. There's nothing too special about it. It's in such an awkward pose and falls off my shelf almost constantly, so I have to hold her back with a Metroid Talon. I've got some other little Metroid figures by Jack Specific, but those are all at my desk at work, which has been long abandoned since the start of, uh, you know. <laughs> and speaking of Metroids, here's a couple of tiny Metroids and a slightly larger one, which unfortunately are not squishy. But you can never have enough Metroids, especially that slightly larger one. I feel between these small Metroids and the really big ones we'll get into later, this one scales the best with the Figma Samus figures. Getting into more memorabilia. Getting into more memorabilia. Uh, getting into more memorabilia. As for more collectibles, I found this massive Metroid mystery box at a GameStop sometime last year, which is pretty cool since there isn't too much Metroid stuff like this that comes out. 
The box barely fits on camera, and it uses art from Samus Returns, which I don't mind at all. That game had a fantastic design for the bounty under herself. As for what was in the box, it came with one of those really oddly shaped notebooks that you'll never actually use and brings me back to times went to Scholastic book fairs. A little card that has some art of Samus' gunship and SR388, the homeworld of the Metroids. A little Metroid keychain. A duffel bag, which I've actually used on several occasions. The slightly larger Metroid that I mentioned earlier, and... Oh my god, it's a Morph Ball stress toy! I, I gotta open this up. Now that is satisfying, but also kind of morbid. I know that people want Samus to crush them, but I'm not so sure about the reverse. It also came with a beanie, which I unfortunately lost and am pissed because I love hats and there is nowhere near enough Metroid hats, but at least I've still got this one from Spencer's. I always mention to my friends how few toys Metroid has gotten, but honestly, I think it might just be because there's not a lot of variety and there's just a lot of toys of, well, Metroids. Like this giant Metroid from Jack Pacific. It's also squishy, as all Metroids should be. And they later came out with a second release that glows under UV light. I've kept mine in the box since this was one of those releases that got scalped almost the second it came out. And it also has a built-in UV light, which makes it much nicer to display. And hey, the effect really isn't all that bad. Maybe someday I'll actually make a containment tank to put it in with some fancy UV lighting of my own. And now for some of my favorite pieces, not only in my Metroid collection, but all the figures that I have as a whole. The Metroid Prime 3 Samus and other M-Zero Suit Samus by Figma. What can I say about these figures that hasn't already been said? Honestly, not much without going into a full-fledged review, but these are seriously some of my favorite figures to just pose around and have fun with. And they really pop in photos. I love how you could even swap the heads and make it look like Samus has her helmet off. If you follow me over on my Instagram, you might see them pop up from time to time. Really though, fantastic figures. And even if you're only into Smash Brothers, I can't recommend them enough. Now how about you make a goddamn Ridley, Figma? Next up, we're finally getting into the games. While I started off with Samus Returns, I think it was towards the middle of 2020 that I started on my quest to start collecting all the games complete in box. I use that fairly loosely, since to me that just means with the box, game, and manual. Any little extras like advertisements are cool to have, but I can do without them. First off, we have the start of my complete in box collecting, Super Metroid. This one was hard to find a decent deal on with the manual, until I accepted that at this point, over 25 years since the game came out, I'm not gonna find one in immaculate condition. But that kind of adds to it for me, gives it a little bit more character. Like this manual might be a little bit beat up, but I know this was probably well loved or abused, I don't know. But man, they just don't make manuals like they used to with cool art scattered throughout. That's honestly the main reason I want the manuals. And here's the game itself. This honestly isn't even a hot take, but even after playing through the rest of the Metroid games, Super Metroid remains as my favorite. Now we have the Game Boy games, which I was very surprised to find. They also cost a pretty penny to pick up complete, but then I realized... The GBA is 20 years old now. God, I feel old. Either way, these are both games I've come to love, especially Zero Mission. And if I can get this thing open... Why won't it open? Now that this thing is open, these games are ones that I actually did get complete in box, complete with the manual, a little Nintendo Power ad, and even a Game Boy Player ad. God, these things are ancient. Metroid Fusion is the same way. We got the game, the manual, a Nintendo Power ad, and wait, no GameCube player ad? What the f***? Either way, both awesome games that I feel continue to evolve and even kind of corrupt the Metroid formula, but in a good way. Too bad we never got Metroid Tread. I really want to see where the story goes from Metroid Fusion. Alas, now we move past the era of cartridges and into the GameCube and Wii era. These are ones that I've had my eye on, but never bit the bullet on until they were sitting right in front of my face at my local game store. Starting here with Metroid Prime. Luck just so had it that for all the games I found at the game store that they were in fact complete in box, with Prime here having its manual, and huh, maybe I was wrong about them not making manuals like they used to. There's some pretty cool art in here. And here's this slip that I swore was just an ad for Metroid Fusion, but it's actually instructions on how to play the original Metroid in Metroid Prime. 
That's cool as hell. And of course, we have that GameCube safety guide that came with every game. Then we've got Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, and I've gotta admit, I love that foil effect on the cover. I'm a sucker any time a game does something cool like this with its cover art. Which I got the same exact way that I got Metroid Prime 1. I found it at my local game store after my girlfriend ran up to me telling me that they had a Metroid game. She's the best. Has the manual, no safety guide, but who cares about safety anyways? <laughs> then finally, we have the Metroid Omicron. Metroid Other M. I've yet to play this game since I'm waiting to play through all the other ones before finally getting to this one. But for those of you who don't know, this is the game that put the Metroid series into hibernation back when it released in 2010. This is one that because of its infamy, it isn't really that difficult to track down even the Japanese version sealed in box. So when I found this one at the game store, I figured, why not? I'm gonna have to grab it eventually anyways. It has the manual, which is awfully thick despite the game toting its simple controls more similar to the NES era by only using one Wiimote for a 3D action game. Ugh. I mean, hey, at least it tells you where to play other, better Metroid games. <laughs> and now for the games that I don't have complete in box, like the original Metroid. What, do you think just because it wasn't complete in box, I wasn't gonna pick it up the moment I saw it out in the wild? Someday I'll get it though. Someday. And I guess here's that weird demo cartridge for Metroid Prime Hunters that came packed in with some DS's back in the day. I remember when I bought this, I legitimately thought this was Metroid Prime Hunters, but was disappointed to find this was just a demo disc that frequently ends up in game store's bargain bins. And now lastly, for a game that has always held a special place in my heart, as the first Metroid game that I actually beat. Metroid Samus Returns. The first and only Metroid game I've been able to buy when it came out. This is the Deluxe Edition. The American Deluxe Edition. Why couldn't they have released this European Collector's Edition stateside? I would have bought the shit out of that! How many DS games get a steelbook? <sighs> but this Deluxe Edition means that it not only came with the game and its awesome reversible cover, but also the soundtrack, which I've never opened because I don't have a CD player. That art of Samus is wicked, though. And here is... Wait, where's the game? Oh, that's right! I left it in my 3DS! My limited edition Metroid 3DS! Yup, as I said, I became a Metroid fan at the perfect time. A game, multiple amiibo, and even a themed edition of the console I needed to play the game in the first place all coming out at the same time. This thing is really nice. I love the colors and metallic look to it. Maybe the design is a little simple, just having Samus on the front, but it just kinda works. And remember earlier how I mentioned I snagged Metroid Samus Returns while hunting down the Metroid Amiibos? It just so happens that the GameStop I went to to pick up the Amiibos had a copy of the special edition under the counter, the only one they had, and they offered it to me. Since I was planning on getting the game anyways, that was a dream come true. And I know he probably isn't watching this, but GameStop Cashier, thank you so much for making my day and helping craft me into a massive Metroid fan. I'm obsessed now, and uh, quite frankly, it's not healthy for my wallet. <laughs> oh, and before I forget, there is one more thing in my Metroid collection I forgot to show you. Well, there you guys go, something a little different. I'll get back to the kaiju content, but I do hope you guys enjoyed me talking about one of the other things I'm really passionate about. If you guys want to see me talk some more Metroid, be sure to leave a like and comment down below. I'd be happy to dive into the games themselves in more detail, and there's even some things that tie it back to kaiju, which might already be a video that's planned for the future. But yeah, thank you guys for watching me rant about something else I love. And now that Dinozone is coming out, Maybe I'll have to upgrade my Gridman collection and do another video like this in the future. But yeah, until next time, Metroid fans, sayonara. <laughs>